Hey, I'm Gleb Chugunov and you're watching Talking Dirt. So who is Gleb Chugunov? This is, I'm a speedway rider. That's all. This guy, this, my father, buy some bikes for me uh, when I was uh, nine year old. We don't have a speedway rider or a sportsman in the family, so I'm the first. What do you do when you're not racing Speedway? Think about Speedway. <laughs> no. Uh, in the season time when I don't have a meeting, I'm just relaxing, make some training and uh, I make music like you know. Did I see on social media skydiving or something like this? Yeah, this was uh, difficult for me because uh, this was first time. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going on Monday. You coming? Monday? Yeah. From the helicopter. So I think it's a good idea because uh, it's my girlfriend that wanna do this first time too. Maybe I will take my father. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> but I, I wanna go second time. I think I like this feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So did you watch the Talking Dirt with uh, Greg Hancock? Uh, yeah. He, s he said that you as a rider to look out for, you're going to be uh, good in the future. Really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't, didn't see this. Wow. Huh. wow. You know, uh, I don't know how much time you have right now to talk about Gleb, but I've got a lot of time for that guy and spent a lot of time working with him here in the club in, in Wrocław. And the dude is, um, he's so unique, he's so special. He's uh, he's a good guy, he's a different guy, he's a different character, he dresses different, he acts different, and the guy can ride a motorcycle as good, if not better, than most. So, uh, I have a lot of good things to say about Gleb, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch him here in the Grand Prix. Do you think he takes his Speedway seriously? You know, he takes his Speedway much more serious than you would imagine, you know, and uh, some of the things that he says and the way he, he approaches the sport in a diff such a different manner than anybody else, it's, uh, it's pretty extreme very unique and uh, the best thing I can say is that he's just flipped. I don't know Greg uh, privately before, before this season. Greg is four times world champion and when, when he just on the stadium so his atmosphere is better and a uh, very cold uh, head and uh, going for the win. I think you are the only speedway rider that Ty Woofenden follows. That Ty follow me? No, Ty follow Magic I think too. Really? Yeah, really. You didn't know that? No. Maybe he liked me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I, I have uh, three times world champion in the team, four times world champion trainer, and uh, one of the, the best riders in the world now. So it's a uh, very good time for the learning, for the explore myself, and for the just going to the front, yeah? So Gleb's not had the night that you'd expect? Or? No, absolutely not. You know, Gleb's capable of beating these guys on any any given day. And you could see tonight, but maybe the, maybe the pressure and the, the level of the whole thing has got to him a little bit. But, um, you know, it's experience for him. Dude, there's always tomorrow. And, uh, you know, this guy's pretty capable of, you know, doing amazing things. So, like I said before, I've got a lot of time for this dude. And uh, it'll be fun to see what he does in the future. Winning world titles, the trophy is the most important part. You know, where, where do you keep yours? Man, it's um, I, I split my my trophies between countries. You know, we have we have a base in the U.S. as home base, and then we got our European base in Sweden. So I split the trophies. I've got two in Sweden. I've got one in the U.S. because in '97 they weren't producing these beauties. So uh, the one thing about this World Championship trophy, though, you know. That beauty that sits out there and is on parade all year long, when, when you win the world title, you stand up there, they hand you that beautiful trophy that weighs a ton, and uh, you get to hold it for all of about, I think we said about five, six minutes in total, 
and then they take it away. And you're like, really? Like, I raced my, my butt off all year for this, and you take it away from me? But then they give you the replica a little later, and uh, that holds a pretty much a pride possession in my house and in both houses, and uh, I often give it a little polish and a little kiss. <laughs> So, are you able to present this trophy to Bartos for us? This is his 2020 uh, replica trophy. I would be more than honored to present that. And, uh, you know, this thing brings back some great memories. And uh, as much as I'd like to rub and kiss it now, uh, I better not. <laughs> Bartek, it gives me great honor to hand over this beautiful trophy. I, can, uh, I appreciate all the hard work that uh, goes into winning something like this. And I'm sure that you, pre you know, probably treasure this equally as much as I do, if not more. And uh, it's, uh, it's a great honor to hand it over to you. You're an amazing rider. Thank you very and, much. And uh, I'm sure we're gonna see you getting more this of these. This is my dreams always. Yeah. A lot of years I be the two times the same trophy and very happy and I keep going and maybe more, <laughs> but we'll see in I'm the future. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Uh, yeah, make the most of it, buddy, and uh, keep going. Thank you. Keep going. Where, where are you going to keep the trophy? <laughs> well, uh, I'm my special room in the house and for the this trophy, and now it's two very close to together, so look like great, I think so. <laughs> <laughs>
is what it is. Speedway. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And uh, how we speak before the meeting, we try um, new things to, to be better for us. Uh, but sometimes it's uh, in sport, in life, you need to uh, make one step behind and uh, then two step forward. So uh, I hope uh, in the future we can uh, we can be much faster. But how I said, um, it's a pretty long process, and uh, and we are in, and uh, I believe. Uh, we can be strong. It's, you know, it's motorsport. It sometimes happens, you know. Sometimes we had so much speed, but sometimes not enough. So today was uh, was a bad day in office, but uh, I hope for the for the future will be better. Well, we're in Lublin next weekend, so we'll see you there, yeah? Yeah, okay. See you, see you in Lublin, guys. Grand Prix, done and dusted, how did it go? <laughs> Gosh, and for me it was uh, another intense, insane night of racing and uh, it just shows you how tough it is at the top, man. Those guys are, uh, they're running hard. We ran hard in my days too and uh, those dudes, they, they really put it on the limit there. And, and uh, what Bartosz did in the final just shows you that you have four laps in the heat and uh, use those four laps to build your momentum, find the line, see the mistakes they're making and um, yeah, a deserved victory for that guy. So it just shows you he's determined to win. I won't be in Lublin on this one, sadly, but uh, I'll be back again soon. Hey, Gashinsky come up to me and said, hey, Jerry from Dirty Talking wants to do an interview with you. Dirty <laughs> Talking? Hey, there you go. The after hours. Just the other Behind show. the scenes. Just the other show. How much is magic loved here? You know, it's uh, you only got to listen, you know, the chants in between, right before the, you know, he pulls up to the starting line and they start chanting magic, magic, or mache, like, uh, you know, makes the hair stand up on my back. <laughs> and I got hair on my back.